In this video, we're going to look at the fundamental counting principle and also some probability problems associated with that. So I think the best way to do this is just jump into examples, and I have a bunch of examples here, about nine of them, so hopefully these will help you. All right, here we go. So to get dressed for school, you open your closet to find that you have the following choices. A red, blue, or white shirt, jeans or sweatpants, tennis shoes or sandals. A. Draw a tree diagram of all the possible outfits. So a tree diagram is a really cool way to see all the possible outcomes that you could have. And the fundamental counting principle is given to give us a shortcut for figuring out those outcomes. But to understand the fundamental counting principle, it's great to start with uh, an example like this. All right, so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to choose our shirt. All right, so we have three choices for our shirt red blue or white so I'm gonna call that red blue or white alright next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna choose uh, what we're gonna wear on the bottom half of our body here jeans or sweatpants so let's just call this pants and we could choose jeans or sweatpants so if I choose a red shirt I can pair that with jeans or sweatpants if I choose a blue shirt I can pair that with jeans or sweatpants and if I choose a white shirt I can pair that with jeans or sweatpants so right now we have six possible outfits red shirt with jeans red shirt with sweatpants blue shirt with jeans blue shirt with sweatpants white shirt with jeans white shirt with sweatpants that's six outcomes now we're gonna put on our shoes so we can pick either tennis shoes or let's use N for sandals so from this outfit for my shoes I can pick tennis shoes or sandals and every outfit I have the option of tennis shoes or sandals. It gets a little crowded here. Let's see if I can squeeze it all in. Tennis shoes, sandals, tennis shoes, sandals. So each one of the branches of this tree represent an outfit. Let's pick this branch right here. So this branch, to get to this branch, we go like this. So we have R, S, N, which means we're going to choose our red shirt, our sweatpants, and our sandals. That's one possible outfit. Now I could ask you to list all the possible outfits, and it'd take a little time, right? Because there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve possible outfits of which that is one possible outfit. Now what the fundamental counting principle does for us is gives us a shortcut way to figure this out and maybe you see it already. So B, use the fundamental counting principle to determine the number of possible outfits. So we're gonna kinda do the same thing except we're not gonna make a whole tree. We're gonna say okay well first I'm gonna choose my shirt then I'm gonna choose my pants and then I'm gonna choose my shoes. All right, how many choices do I have for my shirt? Red, blue, or white, I've got three choices. How many choices do I have for my pants? Jeans or a sweatshirt, I have two. How many choices do I have for my shoes? Um, we're going with tennis shoes or sandals, that's two choices. So in order to come up with the 12 possibilities here, we're gonna multiply these together. Three times two times two is 12. Now, it doesn't list out all the outfits like the tree diagram does. The tree diagram actually shows you all the possible outfits. What the fundamental counting principle does is get you to the number of possible outfits in the quickest way. Just by multiplying how many possibilities there are for each choice. Now, this is where students get a little bit uh, off course here is when we're talking about probability. So now I'm switching to probability. If you randomly choose your outfit, what's the probability your outfit includes a red shirt and sandals? Okay, now remember when you're doing probability, you need to, of whatever it is that you're doing, so for us is red shirt and sandals, we need to find the number of outfits that have red shoes, a oh, red shirt. We don't have red shoes. Did I say shoes before? If I did, sorry. Red shirt and sandals. All right, divided by 
the total number of outfits, all the possible outfits. Outfits. Well, we know the total number of possible outfits. We figured that out. That's the 12, all the possible outfits. But now we also need to figure out the number of outfits that have a red shirt and sandals. Well, we can look at our tree diagram. Red shirt and sandals. All right, so that would be, let's see if we can do it in pink here. This outfit, starting with a red shirt, so we could go red shirt and sandals. So we could go red shirt, jeans, and sandals. Or we could go red shirt, sweatshirt, and sandals. This outfit, actually the one that we circled over here. Red shirt, uh, sweatpants, and sandals. So there's actually only two outfits that include a red shirt and sandals. Now you can actually use the fundamental counting principle to figure this out as well. If we take our three options and we think about our shirt, well, if we narrow it down to just having a red shirt, well, we have one choice for our shirt. And for our pants, we still have two choices. We don't care which pants. But now we're going to wear sandals. So for our shoes, we only have one choice. And if we go one times two times one, we get two. We would want to reduce this down to one sixth. So the probability that we're going to pick an outfit with just um, a red shirt and sandals is one sixth. All right, let's look at the next example. A dime, a quarter, and a nickel are flipped. To create a tree diagram that shows all the possible outcomes for flipping a dime, a quarter, and a nickel. All right, so let's start with our tree diagram. We've got our dime quarter, nickel. Well, what are the possibilities that could happen when we flip the dime? It could be heads or it could be tails. Now I'm going to flip my quarter. So let's say I got a heads on my dime, then I could also get heads on my quarter or I could get tails on my quarter. Same thing down here. Now with the nickel, I could get a heads on my dime, heads on a quarter, heads on my nickel, or maybe I could get a tails on the nickel. All right, so we do this again, and each branch is heads and tails then for each coin. There's our tree diagram. So how many possible outcomes do we have? Let we, you know, it might be good here to actually list the possible outcomes in this case. All right, so this first one, this is a very, very common problem, and I think looking at these outcomes can be valuable, especially the first time you're doing it. So these are all the outcomes. I could get heads, tails, heads here. I could get heads, tails, tails. Each branch is giving me a possible outcome that I can actually write out. Now, when I wrote this problem, I wrote that the three coins were different, um, dime, quarter, nickel, just to help you visualize it but actually it could just be three pennies, right? As long as it could actually be flipping the same coin three times. It doesn't even have to be three separate coins. Let's say I have one coin and I flip it three times. Well, I could get heads on the first flip, heads on the second flip, heads on the third flip, or I could get heads on the first flip, heads on the second flip, tails on the third flip, all right? It doesn't really matter. So you'll see that worded in different ways. So we can see here that there's eight possibilities for what could happen. So if I think about the fundamental counting principle, I could think my first flip, my second flip, my third flip, or my dime, my quarter, my nickel, however you want to think of it, you've got two possibilities, heads or tails, for each of these. And two times two times two is eight. What are those eight possibilities? Here they are. But I don't have to list out all the possibilities to figure out the number of possibilities. So now when I go to probability, when three coins are flipped, what is the probability? Now you need to start thinking about fractions of getting exactly one tail. So we want exactly one tail. So this is going to be a fraction. Now the total possible outcomes when we flip three coins is eight. We figured that out. How many of these have exactly one tail? Let's see, we've got um, this one, this one, there's one more, right? That exactly one tail could be in the first flip, 
here, the second flip, or the third flip. So three out of eight have exactly one tail. Let's try uh, D. Let's do purple. All right. Maybe uh, stop the video and see if you can figure out what D is. That would be a good thing to do. When three coins are flipped, what's the probability that all three coins show the same result? All three are the same. All right, well, check out your sample space. This is called your sample space. Where do you see all three the same? It could be all heads or it could be all tails. There's two outcomes there out of eight that are all the same. So the probability is one-fourth. All right, let's do a couple more examples in this video, and then I'll save my other examples for another video. Number three, in a certain state license plate, uh, in a certain state, license plates have three letters followed by four numbers. So we're going to have three letters followed by four numbers. So we need a letter, a letter, a letter, a number, a number, a number, and a number. We're going to make up our license plate here. If the same letter or number can be repeated, how many can be made? How many license plates can be made? So this is a fundamental counting principle problem. We have choices. How many letters are there? Well, there's 26 letters. So I have 26 choices for my first letter. It can be A, B, C, D, E, F, right? We could make a tree diagram for this, but it would be ridiculous, right? Can you picture it? A, B, C, D, E, all the way down to Z. And then we're going to choose our second letter. So from A, we'd have 26 possibilities coming off A, and 26, you see the tree diagram now, is not very uh, feasible. But it really helped us to see what was happening, I think, in those first two examples. Then let's say I choose A, and then I choose F for my second letter. Now I've got 26 choices for my second letter, so I'd have 26 options coming off this. Now I gotta pick a number. So let's say I pick uh, H for my third letter. Now I gotta pick a number. Well, I could pick any number one through ten. So I'd have, or excuse me, one through zero through nine. One through ten. Zero through nine. Zero, one, two, all the way to nine. All right, I gotta pick another letter. So let's say I pick two, and I got ten coming off of there, right? And ten coming off of that, and ten coming off of that. This tree diagram would be crazy. So the fundamental counting principle tells us we're just going to multiply all these together. I'm going to need a calculator for this. All right, so we got to do 26 times 26 times 26. Let's shortcut that. 26 to the third power. Oh my goodness. All right, 17,576, and then we've got four zeros, multiplying by 10. 17, 5, 7, 6, and four zeros. Goodness sakes. All right, 175,760,000 possible license plates. That's a lot of license plates. Well, let's say we put a restriction on it, and the same letter cannot be repeated. How many can be made? All right, so for part B, we're going to go letter, 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 number, 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 number. So I have 26 choices for my first letter. Let's say I pick A for my first letter. Well, now this is saying you can't repeat your letter, so you can't pick A again for your second letter. So that would mean if we were doing a tree diagram, we would start with B and go all the way to Z. And for B, I couldn't pick B, so it'd be like A, C, D, E. So I only have 25 choices because I can't choose whatever letter I picked for my first letter. Now for my third letter, I can't pick whatever I picked for my first letter or my second letter, so that only leaves me 24 choices. The numbers, same thing, so we could have 10 for each of those. So to find the total number of license plates, is going to be less, right, because we can't repeat. We're going to do uh, 26 times 25 times 24, and then add our four zeros for multiplying by all these tens. So 115,600 uh, and then four more zeros. 156 million possibilities. Not as many as, as up here, but still quite a few possibilities. Now these aren't probability questions, right? These are just counting. I'm not asking, if a license plate is picked at random, what's the probability that it spells dog 
five 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 five. Okay, that would be a, a different kind of problem. Then we'd have to figure out how many license plates actually, uh, you know, our dog five five five. Well, that would be one. That's pretty easy, right? <laughs> There's only one that would say dog. Five, 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 five. So if we were doing a probability problem out of all the possible license plates, then it would look like that. If your number, if your license plate is picked at random, and it says, what's the probability that it, your license plate is dog five 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 five? There's one way to do that out of 175 million seven hundred sixty thousand with no restrictions. All right, let's look at number the uh, number four, and then we'll uh, stop this video and do the other examples later. So four students are to be chosen from a group of ten to fill the positions of president, vice president, treasurer, and secretary. How many ways can this be accomplished? All right, so let's think about this like we're going to choose a president, sort of like our first problem where we're going to choose uh, a shirt, and then we're going to choose a vice president, and then we're going to choose a treasurer, and then we're going to choose a secretary. Okay? Let me write this a little bit nicer. That's kind of hard to read. Vice president. So picture like you've got um, 10 students. We'll just call them A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J. That's 10, right? OK. So we're going to pick somebody for president. And it doesn't matter which one you pick first. You could pick secretary first. You could pick vice first. I don't care. So let's say we have an election and, and D wins for president. Way to go, D. OK, so D's going to be president. Well, these 10 people were all running for president. So we actually had 10 possibilities. But now that D is president, he, can't, he or she can't be vice president. They can't be vice president. So that leaves us nine possibilities for vice president. Let's say uh, F wins for vice president here. Well, now F is vice president. We had nine choices. Now F can't be a treasurer or secretary. We only have these eight people left to choose from for treasurer. So I think you can see where this is going here. Um, so we have eight possibilities for treasurer. Let's say uh, I wins treasurer. I'm just picking these at random, right? And then that would leave us these seven folks left to choose to be the secretary. So we have seven possibilities to be secretary, and maybe A is secretary. So one possibility would be DFIA. Now the total number of possibilities, we would get that by multiplying these together. So we'd have 10 times 9 times 8 times 7 would be 5,040. If I were to ask you to list out all the possibilities for president, vice president, treasurer, and secretary, you would have to list out 5,040 possibilities. This is one of those possibilities. Another possibility might be E for president, uh, you know, I, A, D. Notice I've got some of the same people in here, but I've switched their position. That's a whole whole different possibility. So this would be one of the 5,040 possibilities. That would be another of the 5,040 possibilities. I could keep these same people and just make D the treasurer and A the secretary, and that would count as one of these 5,040 possibilities. All right, so this is video one for the fundamental counting principle with some probability. If you need some more examples, look for part two.